Jackson as... Johnny Dollar. Jim Bates, Johnny. Oh, hiya, Jim. Johnny, when a chief of police gets shot and killed, what would you say is the most likely reason for it? Well, most likely because he's a chief of police. Right. Only I've got a hunch on this one. Like what, Jim? The insured the chief was middle-aged, shot to death with his own gun in his own house. The beneficiary, his wife, is 27. They've been married eight months. The policy's been in force seven months. The face value is $50,000. And the wife filed a claim on it only 24 hours after he was killed. Well, fast girl. She didn't waste any time. What do you think, Johnny? Same thing you do. Maybe I'd better look into it. How about taking a minute or so to talk about seals and fish that have some connection with the government of the United States? Now, that isn't as strange as it sounds. You take the matter of seals, for example. There are two types of seals that are the responsibility of the Secretary of State. First, there's the Great Seal of the United States, which is stamped on all official documents. The Secretary of State makes sure it's always on hand when it's needed. The other kind of seals he takes care of are the ones that swim in the ocean since it's up to the Secretary to work out agreements with representatives of other countries and let them know how many seals can be caught in what is called international waters and when. The Secretary of State works out similar deals for the catching of fish and lobsters because these agreements are actually treaties. Before they can be put into effect, they have to be approved by two-thirds of the Senate. As a matter of fact, any time our government wants to work out a deal with a foreign country on trade mutual assistance, fish, seals, or lobsters, it's done by treaty. And all treaties are signed by the president, though some of them aren't drawn up until after the Secretary of State has worked over the rough spots in order to pave the way for prompt ratification. So, just remember, the Secretary of State is a mighty important wheel in the machinery of your United States government. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Commonwealth Mutual Assurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Dan Frank matter. Expense account item one, $76.40. Transportation to the Great Lakes town of Middleborough and taxi to the home of Dan Frank, former chief of police, now deceased. It was a rambling two-story house, well-trimmed hedges, smooth lawn, quiet neighborhood, good place to live, and the last place you'd think of as a setting for murder. I was halfway up the walk when a man came out the front door, down the steps, and then stopped and waited for me, rocking on his heels. A copper. I can tell him a block away. You're a copper, right? Wrong. Private eye, maybe? Oh, you're getting warmer. Insurance investigator. Insurance? That's what I just asked her about, and she threw me out. Said I was drunk. She was right. I am. Usually am. A little bit. Pete Parker, Daily Herald. Johnny Dollar. Glad to know you. Insurance. He had some or you wouldn't be here. And who gets it? Laura, of course, his ever-loving little wife. Only question left, how much? No comment. I like you, Johnny. You don't talk too much. I do. Let me give you a little advice. Watch yourself. Meaning what? This town. It looks sleepy, dead. Don't let it fool you. It's wide open. Rackets, everything. A guy could get hurt. What about Dan Frank? Was he in on these rackets? Johnny, the police chief here gets 6000 a year. Take a look at that house. Go in and take a look at Laura. Even more expensive. Dan was in. He's out now, though. Be seeing you, Pete. Right, do that. I'm always around Pete Parker, that drunk that works for the Herald. Ask anybody. Well? Mr. 
This is Franks? Yes. Uh, Johnny Dollar is my name. I'm representing the insurance company. Oh, come in, Mr. Dollar. I hardly expected them to pay so promptly. I'm not here to pay you, Mrs. Frank. I'm an investigator. The company wants a little more information about your husband's death. Why? I told them everything in the claim I sent. I know, but there are always a few They're trying to get out of it. I know how those companies operate. Oh, you've had experience with them before? No, of course I haven't. But... What information? What is it you want to know, Mr. Dollar? Well, how it happened, for one thing. Right here. This is where he fell. His gun was laying beside him. Someone had taken it from the table there by the door and waited for him to come down the stairs. Middle of the night, wasn't it? Why did he come downstairs? I'd heard a noise. I woke him up and he came down to see about it. Mm-hmm. Were the lights on? Not down here. I turned on the hall light upstairs and then the shot. Four or five of them. Someone ran out the front door. And got away without being seen? Yes. Who do you think that someone was, Mrs. Frank? I don't know. Dan had a lot of enemies, of course, because of his job. Now, what about his friends? You suppose they could have done it? I don't know what you mean. Well, who were his friends? Who heads up the rackets here in Middleborough? What rackets? Okay. Without your cooperation, though, it's going to take a lot longer to get this settled. Tell me something. Does the insurance company think I'm the one who killed him? Well, I think 24 hours is pretty fast for a grief-stricken widow to shoot a claim into the office. I'm not grief-stricken, Mr. Dollar. So I've noticed. You go see Max Beely. Talk to him. Max Beely? The city attorney. Get his story before you jump to conclusions. See if he thinks I'm guilty. All right, I will. Then we'll talk. Afterward. Maybe I'll even cooperate. Maybe you will be a little nicer to me. I'll tell you why she sent you to me. So I could tell you she didn't kill him. That she couldn't possibly have killed him. Why not, Mr. Beely? Late at night, the two of them alone in the house. The chief shot with his own gun. That mysterious Prowler story has been used before. Yeah, I know. But you're wrong about one thing. They weren't alone in the house. I was there. Oh? You see, Dan and I were leaving early in the morning on a fishing trip, so I was staying all night. I woke up and heard somebody in the hall outside my room. About the time I opened the door, Laura snapped on the hall lights. Just then, the shots blasted downstairs. She was standing in the door of her room, not ten feet away. She couldn't have done it. No, apparently not. She sure couldn't have had a better alibi, the city attorney himself. Were you and Dan Frank good friends, Mr. Beatty? No, we didn't have much use for each other. Well, then why were you... I know, I know. I was spending the night in his house, and we were going fishing together. You're thinking maybe I needed that alibi as much as Laura does. Well, it does work both ways, Mr. Beatty. Uh-uh. No motive. Laura could be a motive. She's a beautiful girl. A lot younger than her husband, I understand. About your age, in fact. Uh-uh, again. I know her too well. Sure, she's a knockout, wild honeysuckle and a handful of stars, but inside there's a little cash register bell, and when you put money in it, it rings real pretty. And when you don't, Nothing. Dan found out. Is that why he got mixed up with the rackets here? Sure, he needed dough to... <laughs> You do get around, don't you? Who told you there were any rackets here? Hey, Max, I wonder if you'd go over there. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know you... Oh, come on in, Commissioner. This is Johnny Dollar, insurance investigator. He's checking into Dan's killing. A terrible loss. Commissioner Corbett, Mr. Dollar. How do you do? How are you? Hey, if there's any way at all we can help, Mr. Dollar, just speak out. The entire facilities of City Hall are completely at your disposal, sir. Well, thanks, Commissioner. Just uh, what is the theory on the shooting? Find Eddie Sales and you've got the killer. Eddie Sales? And Chief Frank sent him up a couple of years ago. Eddie swore he'd get him if it was the last thing he did. Eddie was paroled last week. Seen here in town the morning before the killing. Hasn't been seen since. We've combed the town for a week. No luck. Well, it seems to add up. Would uh, Mrs. Frank know anything about the rackets her husband was tied up with? Rackets? Why, that's... Uh, no, Commissioner. He's been talking to people. Found out our fair city's not as lily white as it looks. Oh. Well, then, there's no point in trying to cover it up. It's true, Mr. Dollar. Unpleasant as it is to admit it. Any idea who's back of them? Not enough to talk about. If I did, I'd be talking about it in court. Find Eddie Sales, Mr. Dollar. That's the key to both the killing and the rackets. Find Eddie, and you can wind this up in ten minutes. (laughs) 
Expense account item two, a dollar and fifty cents. Taxi from City Hall back to my hotel. I kept trying to make sense out of what I'd learned, but got nowhere. Everybody blamed Eddie Sales, the ex-con with a grudge. Only Eddie wasn't around. I still wasn't any closer to an answer when I got out at the hotel. I watched the taxi pull away and then started across the walk toward the entrance. It was Laura Frank, parked at the curb a few yards away. I've been waiting for you, Johnny. Oh, have you? I wanted to talk to you. Why don't you get in? Okay. Did you talk to Max? Yeah. He gives you a pretty strong alibi. I could have told you myself, but you'd have checked with him anyway. Yeah, I imagine I would have. You're not being any nicer, Johnny. Is that what you wanted to talk about? Maybe. I'm ready to be nicer. Oh? And how about cooperative? That too, Johnny. And tell me why you didn't mention Eddie's sales when I talked to you earlier. Why should I? I don't know that it was Eddie. I suppose it was. Everybody's sure of it. But I don't know it was him. I see. Forget him, Johnny. If the police can't find him when they know the town inside out, it's a cinch you. Get down, quick. Are you all right? <laughs> yes, I, I guess I am. Why, Johnny? Why would they want to kill you? How do you know it was me they were shooting at? No. No. Something to think about, isn't it? Do you feel any more cooperative? I've got to get out of here, Johnny. I'll... Talk to you later. I've got to get out of here. Uh, waiter. Uh, waiter? Yes, sir? Another scotch and soda. How about you, Johnny? Well, thanks, Pete. Not right now. Oh, uh, I forgot to ask. How did you find me? I called the paper. They gave me the names of three bars. I was lucky on the first try. <laughs> a reputation is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Well, Johnny, what else you want to know? More about Laura Frank? Why? She's got an alibi. I know. And somebody tried to knock her off a couple of hours ago. Not necessarily. She could have been setting me up for that one. Possible. Huh? Hey, Arthur. Oh, thanks. Laura Frank hates champagne, but always orders it. It costs more. A pink and gold doll in spangled tights. A four-star tramp. Ex-dancer at the Cosmo Club. Ex-girlfriend of Eddie Sales until Dan... Girlfriend of Eddie Sales? Oh, sure. Sure, hadn't you heard about it? That's why Eddie swore he'd get Dan. Claimed he was being framed. Maybe he was. Maybe Laura suggested it to Dan. Eddie had done all he could for her by then. Why do you hate her, Pete? Uh uh-uh. uh. It's, uh, it's quite the contrary, Johnny. I'm in love with her. Always will be. She was my girl before she met Eddie Sales. Oh. Oh, wait a. It's a screwy case any way you look at it, Johnny. That gun, for instance. I guess you heard. No. What about it? Well, they found it lying beside Dan's body. His own gun. So, of course, they assumed he shot it out with the killer. It was two days before the lab woke up and realized he'd been shot with his own gun. Hadn't oh, used it at all. Excuse me, Mr. Parker, there's a call for you. I'll... Plug the phone in here. Oh, thanks. Hey, Arthur. Pete Parker. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure, I'll cover it. Oh, yeah, yeah, right away. It's a three-alarm fire, Johnny. Laura Frank's place. Flames 50 feet high. They can't get inside.
know, many great men have attained the highest office in our land, the presidency of the United States. Can you guess the name of this man? The son of a president, he served his country as diplomat, lawmaker, and secretary of state before becoming president himself. His excellence as a speaker won for him the nicknames of Old Man Eloquent and The Walking Vocabulary. In his first message to Congress as president in 1824, he recommended a program of national improvements, including the building of highways, canals, a national university, and federal weather observatories. He was also responsible for the Smithsonian Institute. If you don't have his name by now, here are two more clues. During his presidency, the Erie Canal was completed and the first passenger railroad was built. Who was he? John Quincy Adams, sixth president of the United States. His life is part of your American heritage. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account item three, $6.20. Refreshments for Pete Parker of the Daily Herald. And taxi to Laura Frank's house in the suburbs. Marked now by a pillar of flames visible for blocks. The whole outside shell of the house was blazing. And the firemen couldn't do much of anything but try to keep it from spreading. And hold back the crowd that had collected on the street and lawn. It's terrible, Mr. Dollar. Simply terrible. A total loss. Yeah, it looks that way. So what about Laura, Commissioner? Where's Laura Frank? Oh, she's all right, Pete. Got out before it really caught. She's over there in the car with Max Feely. Where? Oh, oh, yeah. Well, we'll see you later, Commissioner. You coming, Pete? Yeah, right with you. A terrible thing. Just terrible. Pardon me, please. Come on, let us through, please. Pardon us, please. Come on. Johnny, you were right. Johnny. It was me. They were after and now they've tried again. Yeah, it could be. Oh, hiya, Mr. Bealey. Well, another one for you, Mr. Dollar. The house is insured, too. Oh, it was awful. I came home and lay down on the sofa, and I guess I dropped off to sleep. I woke up with flames all around me. I was just lucky to get out. You've always been lucky, Laura. See, I, I can get along without any remarks from you. Sure you can, baby. You're getting along real fine. Too bad the car wasn't in the garage. Then all your assets will be converted to cash. Nice, green, bloody cash. Shut up, you drunken fool. Go away from here and leave me alone. Why? You can afford me now. Get out! Get out of here. Hey, hey, take it easy, both of you. I'm sorry. Lost my head. How do you figure, Mr. Dollar? I mean the fire. Eddie's sales? Well, it kind of looked that way. He got Dan Frank a week ago and came back and tried for Laura tonight. Where the devil's he been hiding out, though? I've gone over this town foot by foot. Hard to tell. That came from the house. Ammunition, maybe. The chief probably uh, has some... There's somebody coming out by the cellar door. He's carrying a gun. Look, he's falling on the ground. Come on. How can anybody come out of that alive? Let's get him turned over. Come on. Easy now. Good Lord. You know him? It's the boy we've been looking for, Mr. Dollar. Eddie Sales. can't promise anything, gentlemen. That shot may bring him to for a few minutes, or it may not. He's badly burned. What are his chances of coming through it alive, Dr. Redmond? Not one in a thousand, Commissioner. He may hang on for a day or two, and he might become conscious for a short while and be able to talk. But as far as pulling through, not a chance, really. Mm. Well, there's no point in me staying here any longer. If he does talk, you can get his statement, Max. Good night, gentlemen. Thank you, Max. Good night, lad. Well, the whole answer, Mr. Dollar, right there on that bed. And we may never find out what it was. I can't figure those shots. He fired them before he came out of the blaze. He wasn't trying to shoot anyone, apparently. He couldn't even see anyone burned the way he was. I'm going up to the dispensary and get some more plasma. I'll be back in a few minutes. But how do you figure it, Johnny? That Eddie started the fire? Well, there's no other way to figure it, Pete. Oh, but if he did, it's funny he got caught in his own trap. Yeah, he started it all right. And he shot Dan. 
Oh, now he's paying oh, for it. It looks like we're not going to find out who's behind the racket. Oh, man. Hey, wait a second. Huh? He's trying to say something. Who, who double-crossed you, Eddie? Hey, Eddie, can you hear me? Well, well, he still can't make it. That may be as close as he'll ever come. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, yeah. Just a second. To you, Mr. Dollar. Oh, thanks. Johnny Dollar. Me, Johnny. Oh? I've, I've got to talk to you. Right away. All right. Talk. Not on the phone, Johnny. I'm across the street from the hospital. It's an all-night lunchroom. Can you come over here? I guess so. Right away? Yeah, right away. So long. Pete. Yeah, Johnny. Who is it? That was Laura. She wants me to meet her across the street. Stay here and keep an eye on things, will you, Pete? Sure, go ahead. Here, Johnny. Over here in the booth. Now, what's in your mind, Mrs. Frank? Sit down, Johnny. Come on. Thanks. You had to talk to me right away. Well? Look at me, Johnny. I'm not so bad, am I? In looks, you mean? Oh, no. Well, you're a pink and gold doll. A handful of stars. That's what a couple of guys said today. And I guess it fits. I don't care what a couple of guys said. What do you say, Johnny? You look great, Mrs. Frank. Terrific. Now, if you'll excuse no, me... No, wait. Johnny... I'm in the clear on this. You know that. The night my husband was killed, I've got an alibi nobody could shake, right? Well, I'm convinced that you didn't pull the trigger, if that's what you mean. And you could convince the insurance company, too, if you would. We could have this over and settled. Yeah, they'd go pretty much on my report. Why don't you be nice and turn in a real good report? Well, we get some answers first, Mrs. Frank. Straighten out some of the coincidences. Like the fact that you heard the noise and woke up. But you sent Chief Frank downstairs. And you turned on the upstairs lights behind him and made a perfect target out of him. Let's hear what Eddie Sales has to say before I file a report. Suppose Eddie dies without talking. Well, in that case, you probably will be in the clear. And now, if you'll excuse Johnny, me... Johnny. I'll give you $10,000. Make that report. Now... You are anxious, aren't you? I just want to get it settled and out of the way. Pete. Oh, Johnny, one of the firemen I know just came by the hospital. They found out why Eddie Sales fired those shots. The cellar door was padlocked on the outside. He shot the lock off to get out. And Eddie didn't set the fire. He was locked in the basement. So he was the one who was supposed to die in it. Right, Mrs. Frank? I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, what did you want to see me about, Johnny? See you about... Oh, yeah. You just phoned the hospital and said to come right over here that you wanted to see me. Come on, Pete. Let's get back over there. That's why she wanted to talk to me. To get me away from that room. The other lady's coming down now. Eddie's the big threat. If he comes to and knows he's finished, he'll probably talk his head off. Here it is. We get there before. Uh, well, leaving, Mr. Bealy? Uh, uh, yeah, somebody phoned. The commissioner wants me to meet him across the street. Is there anybody up there with Eddie? Well, uh, no, not right now. The doctor will be back in a few minutes, though. Come on. Look, look, I've got to meet the Shut commissioner. Shut the doors, Pete. Oh, what's going on here? Look, I haven't got time to go back upstairs. I think you'd better take time, Mr. Bealy. Well, it's all right. Eddie wasn't showing any signs of coming to. I'll bet he wasn't. All right, let's go. Now, look, you you mind letting me in on this, Mr. Dollar? Let's go down to that room and take a look at Eddie first. What happened to that policeman they had on duty? I was here in the hall when I left. He might have walked down to the... Did you leave that door open, Mr. Beatty? I know. Come on. What the devil? Are we interrupting anything, Commissioner? What are you doing with that pillow? Well, nothing. Nothing at all. You I... were holding it down over Eddie's face. You were trying... 
dead. You smothered him. He was dead when I came in. I was just moving the pillow. Did you have to get us all out of the hospital and send the police guard away just to move a pillow? Mr. Dollar, surely you're not suggesting that... Well, I'm suggesting it. Corbett, I've known for a year that you were back of the rackets here, but I didn't have any way of proving it. Until now? Is that what you mean, Max? Hold it right where you are. That gun isn't your answer, Commissioner. There are three of us, and you can't get us all. Stay back, Dollar. Why did you have Dan Frank killed? He was one of your boys. I can tell you, Mr. Dollar. Dan was going to pull out, spill the whole business, give me names and facts. That was the reason for the fishing trip. Laura must have tipped off Corbett. Eddie Sales was in town and already had a grudge against the chief. It was real convenient. That's right, Max. Real convenient. Then Eddie hid out in the basement of Laura's house until she decided she'd feel safer if he were dead. Until she locked the basement door and burned the house down tonight. Laura was a weak link. That's why we tried to knock her off this afternoon. Come on, you better give me the gun call. Stay back. You better do as he says, Commissioner. I'm warning you, Dollar. Don't come any closer. Stay where you are or I'll... Let go of it. Drop it. Let go of it. Go it. Go. Watch it. He's making for the window. Hit him off. Peter. You'll never stop me from... Well, he got out of being prosecuted. You don't have any defendants left, Max. Laura. Eddie Sales is dead. Commissioner Corbett. And Dan, too. No witnesses and nobody to prosecute. He still has you, Mrs. Frank. Accomplice to murder. Uh Uh-uh, Johnny. No witnesses. She's right, Mr. Dollar. I couldn't build a case against her. With this, you can. With what? Well, she intended it to be an insurance claim, but it's actually a confession. All signed and witnessed. What are you talking about? It's all filled out with a complete story of what happened. It says, we found my husband's body at the foot of the stairs. He'd been shot and killed with his own gun. Mr. Dollar, I don't quite see what... This claim was in the main office of the insurance company less than 24 hours after Dan Frank was killed. But the police didn't find out he'd been shot with his own gun until two days later. How did you know it, Mrs. Frank? Expense account item four, $110.80. Hotel, incidentals, and transportation back to Hartford. Expense account total, $194.90. Yours truly, Johnny Dollars. 